Hello everybody and welcome to another video. We're going to be looking at the GL iNet MT300N version 2. So I've already opened the box and this is what's inside, the mini smart router as they call it. So let's take a look at the ports on the back. So we've got a WAN and a LAN port, both at 100 megabits per second. We've got the micro USB power slot just there. On the other side, we've got the USB 2.0 slot. And next to that, we've got a reset button. And over here, we have a configurable switch, which I believe is configurable by the four GPIO pins on the inside of this case. We've got three LED indicators just there and also it's got some little swirly I think they're just vent holes on either side and what else came in the case was this nice little booklet which is very newbie friendly it also comes with a cat 6 ethernet cable and it's one of the flat types at about half a meter and we also have the micro USB cable and that's for powering the device. You don't have the wall plug for it, so we're just gonna use our PC to power it. All right, so let's take a look at GL iNet's interface. All right, so we've got the micro USB cable plugged into the PC and we've got the ethernet cable plugged into the LAN port of the Mango and then the LAN port of my PC. I would pick it up and show you but the cables don't reach. So you're just gonna to have to take my word for it. So if we just run a command prompt and do IP config, the default gateway is 192.168.8.1. Let's just plug that in right there. And this should bring up our interface. So we're gonna choose English as that is my native language. It wants to set us up a password, so let's just plug one in there. Submit that. All right, and this is the first time I've actually looked at GLINet's interface, so we've got the language selection at the top, which is really nice, a reboot and a logout button. We can see our device and one client, LAN client, that'll be the PC that I'm on. And it also says no cable detected in the WAN, and that's probably something that I should have done. So if I plug in my existing network right now, we should just get an IP address straight from that and everything should be fine. So let's do that right now. Okay, so I've just plugged my existing network into the WAN port and there it is, popped up. It's served us an address nicely, which is fantastic. So it's also got some other options here like repeater tethering, 3G, 4G modem but it's detected that we are, have a cable plugged in, which is very nice. We've also got some wireless options here, clients, uh, an upgrade button, and it's due an upgrade. Oh, and that's really lovely, actually. It tells you the features of the next upgrade. I really like that. So it tells you what's in the next release and the compile day and time. So that's really nice. That's a really good feature. <coughs> Excuse me, we've also got, oh, it comes with WireGuard as well. That's amazing. So I used to use OpenVPN a lot, but I've moved on to WireGuard now just because I think it's superior in performance, especially on low-end devices. And if we hit more settings, uh, we've got some button settings here, revert the firmware. Let's see what advanced does. Now that looks like it's loading Lucy, which it has done. So this is just like stock OpenWRT. So let's just plug the password that we typed in earlier. There it is. So that's really sort of strange, but it's nice that you can go to the OpenWRT and that just looks exactly, I was gonna say it looks exactly the same, but the... <laughs> There's no wireless option under network, so that's kind of strange. Normally I'd expect to see a wireless there, but that's, you know, that's by the by. Maybe it's configured in the GLINet um, 
firmware, so how would we go back? I imagine we'd just press log out and then if we just take that away and that takes us back to the GL iNet interface. All very good. So what I really wanted to do was just put stock OpenWRT because I think this looks it looks very it looks like it looks very well <laughs> it looks very well presented. I think they've done a good job of that actually. Very, very, very newbie friendly by the looks of it. Um, so if we go to upgrade and then local upgrade, so we can drag a bin img zip tar or gz file. So let's go to downloads openwrt.org the latest stable is 19.07.3 and our target is what's our target ramips i believe i'm mouse is right over it it's the mt76x8 and over here we have the gl mt300n version 2 so we'll just click that and download it and also it would be good to grab the SHA-256 uh, sum as well. So if we just um, drop that in a notepad. Okay, and the file is already downloaded. So if we just open up a PowerShell and then do a SHA-256 sum, you know what? We're probably going to have to change directory to downloads. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> it's like I'm using the. Uh, I'm not using Linux. I'm using Windows. I do this all the time. So. Um, <laughs> oh Jesus! There we go. So for now we do a sha. 256 sum of uh, open WRT. <laughs> I've done it again. <laughs> it's quite funny that that's happened. Let's find the PowerShell command. So why don't we get file hash and surely we'd have to specify what kind of hash we want. SHA 256 path come on tab the tab tab button's not working you know if this was um if this was linux honestly path one all right well we got there in the end that's uh that's all that was after <laughs> let's just dump that in notepad and it's all capitalized fantastic the reason i'm doing this is to show you how badly, <laughs> how to compare the hashes. You should always compare the hashes uh, just to check that your firmware isn't compromised. If any of these are different, then you need to re-download it. I'm happy with that. So let's come out of that. Let's get out of PowerShell because it's not a proper terminal. <laughs> Don't want to see that again. And let's drag the file into the local upgrade. Success! Version unknown. Uh, keep settings. Let's untick the keep settings and let's press install. Not sure how long this will take, but let's give it a few minutes. So we have an IP address of 192.168.1.1 and we've got the DNS suffix as .lan. So I already know that OpenWRT has flashed. All three lights are on the front. And also as it was flashing, I was reading what the buttons are. So the LED on the left is the power. The LED in the middle is labeled as configurable and the LED on the right is labeled as wireless. So this, um, image here is obviously going to fail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the browser. In fact, let's just let it get to 100. 
Okay, so it says you need to reconnect your router, but we don't have the GL iNet firmware loaded on. So to avoid any discrepancy, let's just close the browser, reopen, and go to 192.168.1.1. There it is, with no password set. And that's how to flash your GL MT300N version 2 with OpenWRT. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.